What is going on everyone? This is your daily dose of mental health. And in this video, we will be discussing uh, methamphetamine withdrawals. Uh, before I go any further, if you could please like and subscribe to the channel, I greatly appreciate it. And also uh, leave a comment on another topic you would like me to discuss in regards to mental health. I haven't done a video in a couple weeks. I've just been pretty busy with work, but I'm gonna continue to put out videos in regards to mental health, recovery, and different types of addiction. You can check out my own um, personal recovery from Tramadol um, down here. I'll put the video if you want to check it out, my Tramadol withdrawal journey, which I'm still clean today. So let's get back to it. This video will be about uh, methamphetamine withdrawal. Also, I don't do any editing or anything. This is just me talking. So let's get into it. Me this is meth methamphetamine withdrawal um, and kind of what you can expect. Also, I am an RN, so I see this, and I work in a psych uh, inpatient setting, so I see a lot of this every day. And I just wanted to go over what you can expect, some of the long-term, I mean, some of the short-term symptoms, long-term symptoms, and stuff that can really help you get through your meth, um, your meth cravings. So let's get started, okay? Um, so let me just start out with this. Methamphetamine withdrawal can be a very difficult process, um, but considering the effects of meth use on the body and mind, um, it's definitely worth the effort. Um, I will get into some of the medications that can help as well, but I want to treat this more so as a holistic um, recovery as well, because I know a lot of people don't want to get off of, you know, they, they've used something for a while, and then they don't want to be bumped onto another medication that they'll eventually want to get off. But I will mention some of the meds, but let's continue on. Um, <clears throat> so let's start about, let's start with the initial meth withdrawal. So let's just say you've been using, um, you either trying to quit, want to quit, or your family sends you to a psych facility, which happens a lot because they want you to get clean. Um, some of the initial meth withdrawal symptoms that I've seen at least, and they can last just depending on how much you're using, how much you're using a day, how you're using it. Meaning if you're, there are people who actually even, uh, who put it up their rectum, they snort it, they smoke it, and the, har the harshest one is definitely injecting. Um, so typically somebody who go through severe withdrawal of meth, hitting forward, you know, this would be two weeks in, would be the people who are using, uh, who are injecting the meth, or, or who injecting um, the meth. Um, so typically the short, in the short term, some of the first meth withdrawal symptoms you will see are de dehydration, headaches, Muscle pain and spasms is big, so we'll definitely, definitely, you take something for your muscle pain. Um, appetite changes, you're going to have very intense cravings, which will lead into the post-acute withdrawal of symptoms as well. I've seen psychosis, which can be very scary. Uh, fatigue, anxiety, and insomnia. Now, you might ask yourself, why, why, why would there be insomnia if they've been using and using and using to stay up? How would that lead to more insomnia? The problem is, is yes, a lot of people who just have been smoking it occasionally and going, yes, they're going to be sleeping, but the people who have been using it heavy, injecting it, when they go into psychosis, if they're not treated and given any other medication, the sleeping is just going to get worse. They're going to have, the insomnia will continue for at least two weeks. Um, and so for the long term, in the long term, some of the, the meth, some, really what I've seen for a long term, um, side effects, as you might say, um, that I've seen at least, and there's a lot more, is the mental side of things. So once you get past, you know, a lot of the physical um, symptoms, which as I said, muscle pain, muscle spasms, headaches, anxiety, you're really going to be flipping it toward the mental side, meaning depression, anxiety, cognitive issues. So you're going to have problems processing thoughts. Um, the cravings is a big one too. I mean, that was one of my big problems when I long-term still is having those cravings and vivid dreams of using. That's another thing you will uh, have. Um, our regular sleep patterns will continue, but your sleeping will over time, regardless of how you are using it, the more time you give your body clean, and even if you've been through some psychosis with it, it will improve. Um, so, the main reason as well I wanted to make this is because right now we've had an influx of patients who have been using a lot more meth recently, and I'm from the Midwest, um, and 
I'll just say this, I'm not from here, but for example, Independence, Missouri, it was like number, they're always like top 10 in meth, meth, meth use in the United States. And they were like number one, like five, this was like six years ago. And they stay pretty close to between like number one through five. Um, so I just want to go ahead and say this. So during, so if you're going to be detoxing, um, the first step in the meth, meth withdrawal detox um, or the period of recovery when the body adjusts is not having the drug. Um, it's as simple as that. So you're going to be craving it. It's advised to undergo um, detox. It, it is advised, and this is my own opinion, I know some people can't, to go under medical supervision. Um, and this is especially if an addict has been using for a long time. And the other big question is how were they using it? So were they, as I said, injecting is typically, you're going to have the hardest side effects and long-term effects from it. However, you still can get clean. Um, another thing I have seen and doctors have seen as well, um, in general from meth users is dehydration. Um, typically, you know, when a meth user goes into, and this is for all meth users, um, when a meth user is uh, going into that crash phase, pay, uh, a lot of times patients can become paranoid, hallucinate, and have intense anxiety. Um, and also, during the second phase, this brings about insomnia and depression um, with extreme cravings, which are difficult to combat. So as I said earlier, you have your initial withdrawal phase. Some people, it's just three to five days. Some people, it's two weeks, and then you go into that second phase um, where you have those mental mental cravings a lot of times. Um, a lot of times during what I've seen during the stay yeah, I'm, you know, at a detox center when somebody's going through meth withdrawal, um, we do, and they typically will try to provide uh, medications. Now, one big problem I've noticed is somebody will get off of meth, and then they'll be taking something like, so for like the anxiety and irritation, a benzo. And they're, they're known to really help with the irritation and anxiety um, in some of the withdrawal patients. Um, however, if used too long, they can become just as addictive as meth. So it's all about that pro, the pros and cons of how long do you use it for. Some people need to use it, you need to use a benzo for a couple, you know, two to three months and up to six months and they can get off of it after it. It just depends case by case. But you see benzos a lot because of just the extreme anxiety and irritation they go through. Um, now for the psychosis, so for once again, a lot of times, not all the time for people who are using, um, you know, it's IV drug use, injecting, they have a high, they, they do have typically higher rates of hep C, as with anyone who shoots drugs, but the biggest thing with meth is the psychosis aspect. So a lot of times they will try to prescribe antipsychotic drugs and sedatives, uh, which can help um, with the psychosis and extreme cases of meth withdrawal. Once again, that would be with somebody who's using, who's been injecting. Um, typically, a psych antipsychotic wouldn't be given to somebody who had just been smoking it for a while, for, you know, let's say a year they've been smoking it and they're going cold turkey. They'd probably be given something for anxiety, but a lot of times the antipsychotics don't need to be used unless they're in active psychosis for meth or if they've been, or if we, they have a high risk of going into psychosis as a result of injecting them. Some of the antipsychotic drugs that can be, that I've seen prescribed would be stuff like Risperdone or Risperidol or Olanzapine or Zyprexa. Um, there are, now this is where I'll go into a lot of people don't like Risperidol because especially for men, it can cause uh, gynomastia, which is breast development long-term. But these two, but these two medications can really help in initial psychosis, in particular Cyprexa. Sometimes we'll give patients Cyprexa injections, which will help them sleep and just ca and help calm their mind with all the racing thoughts and just the psychosis that comes along with it. Because if you've never seen somebody in true drug-induced psychosis, you wouldn't believe what you what I what I would be telling you unless you've actually seen it. I mean, it's it can be scary. They can be very aggressive. Um, don't know where they are they can start urinating um you know they'll, you'll find fecal matter in their bed on the wall i mean it's it's a whole it's it's different and i'll tell you it can be scary sometimes but you need people that will work with them the body pains as well so tylenol will be used they typically unless 
you know, they were hurt prior to coming in, they're not going to be giving anything opioids, opiates. The most they'll give probably from a controlled substance uh, point of view would be a benzo. Um, so typically after a detox, um, for long-term withdrawal, therapy and support groups um, can help with motivation. And the biggest thing I noticed even with my own recovery from opiates is avoiding those triggers. So a lot of times why people end up relapsing is because they are in whatever situation they're in outside of, you know, the groups. It could be their home. It could be friends. You got to learning to avoid those triggers because if you go back in the same situations you were in, you know, chances of relapsing are very high. And one sad thing about all of it is a lot of times, even for a lot of people getting help, and going to an inpatient psych facility to get the help they need, they can't even do because they don't have insurance. It's a lot, it's people who, if they've been using for a long time, haven't had jobs. Um, so there's, it's a, there's two parts of this. Um, and in this one, and in this video, as I said, I'm going to go into the inpatient side and how, how it is treated. I will do a whole nother video on somebody who is going to be going cold turkey homeless, doesn't have the resources to come to a facility to get help or go to a detox center to get help. Um, so yeah, I'm going to continue on and go. Once again, please like and subscribe if you're liking the content and throw a comment out down there, down below. Um, after detox, um, yeah, so for the crate, you will still have the cravings and, um, and the sleep problems. Um, sometimes they'll give narcolepsy drugs, um, in particular with meth withdrawal. Um, uh, there are certain drugs that will help, uh, which it's like, uh, I'm trying to think of the, the name. It's, I think it's Citra or Mod, I think it's Modafinil. Yeah, that, okay, it's that. Um, it has a moderate stimulant effect and it can be used by managing narcolepsy and ADHD, that med. But it can also aid with cra cravings of meth, which I know some people say you're exchanging one for another, but in reality, if it's controlled, the medication, it's it's something, it's worth replacing that with meth. Um, depression, sometimes they'll use things like Prozac, that's a big one, or even things like Wellbutrin. These uh, are antidepressants, and they can really, they can help with meth withdrawal, um, and they can, they can help, um, they're not stimulants by any means, but they've been known to help just with the depression aspect of it, as we talked about. Um, and lastly, as I said, with, uh, mon uh, monofinil, that's really good at helping, lo helping long-term with your cognitive abilities and processing ideas. Um, Topamax is another great, um, medication for that. Um, they've all been shown actually to help with the cognitive, um, cog with co cognition, um, for long-term meth withdrawal. So these would be, so think, so antidepressants, um, well, butrin, uh, modafinil, these are things that would help be long-term meds that you would have, that you'd be taking with no chance of really having addiction concerns. Um, but it really can help getting back to normal from, you know, a mental, from a mental, uh, from a mental point of view, meaning your cognitive abilities. Um, now that's, and now that's the inpatient side. And this is the other side I want to go into. So I know I'm not, I look at it two ways. Medications can help, obviously. But I like to look at it from more holistic standpoints. I work in a psych hospital, so I support obviously giving patients medications because I've seen the difference it helps. It changes changes with them. They come in in psychosis, horrible spot, they leave a completely different person. The only thing I would want to add on to that is a lot of times when they leave, they're going to be back in those situations they were in. They will have those triggers again. So a whole, the, a whole other aspect is being able to change your life, your new life you are going to be going to. Meaning, let's say you're in a home of people who use, and that's where you have to go back and live. I found that change, I found things like changing, um, changing, um, you know, your sleeping patterns in regards to, let's say you used to use at certain times during the day, trying to find different things to do during those times. So let's say you got up, used met, you know, you took a hit at 10 in the, you know, you took a hit at 12 when you woke up, take another one, you just continue throughout the day, try to switch it to where you're getting up earlier in the morning, like at eight, 
and maybe go try to exercise if you can and just continue to try to switch it up switch switching up switching up the routine can really make a difference because your brain is all about routine um another thing is aa if you can find na groups um aa groups personally i did not go through that some of i it's there it helps people but for me it was i didn't want it, i didn't go that route um but i will say that we need to find more resources for people going through drug withdrawal um for opiate withdrawal opioid withdrawal meth withdrawal and just showing them that it can be okay and that's the main focus of this channel for me is just showing that you know i've been through withdrawal tramadol withdrawal and i've recovered to a point of where i'm back to normalcy i'm working in a psych facility i'm an rn now um and that's one reason I work in mental health. It's because I can relate to patients a lot. Um, that's the purpose of this channel, to get some outreach to. Um, I'm going to do another video coming up about... Um, I'm going to do the... My next video will be five... It'll be the five, and which I'll go into more so outside of the inpatient side where I was talking about medications and kind of what the process of the withdrawal phase would be with meth. The next video I'll be putting out is going to be called the five, five ways um, to, to have a smoother, like to go through meth with, it's going to be, it's essentially going to be five ways to make meth, meth withdrawal smoother. Um, five things you can do naturally um, and that have been proven and shown through a couple friends of mine and family to help. To where if you don't have resources, obviously, to go to a psych facility to get help or go to a doctor to get help, these are resources that can be that are easily accessible to you um, that can help you through your through your withdrawal process. It'll be the five. It'll be um, five ways to make meth to make meth withdrawal easier for you. It'll be it'll be titled something like that. It'll be but it'll be five ways. Um, I hope you like the content. Once again, please like and subscribe. I don't do any editing um, yet. I don't really have that equipment, um, but I'm going to continue to put out videos. I love you all. Leave a comment. This is your daily dose of mental health. Peace and love.